Good morning, everyone. I hope you had a few winks of sleep. Uh, it's been a, quite an eventful uh, yesterday, and uh, uh, hopefully things will settle down here with all the fires that are going on. We are continuing our reading uh, in 1 Corinthians, and this is found in chapter 8, verses 1b through 7 and 11 through 13. Brothers and sisters, knowledge inflates with pride, but love builds up. If anyone supposes he knows something, he does not yet know as he ought to know. But if one loves God, one is known by him. So about the eating of meat sacrificed to idols. We know that there is no idol in the world and there is no God but one. Indeed, even though they, there are so many gods, so-called gods in heaven and on earth, there are to be sure many gods and many lords, yet for us there is one God, the Father, from whom all things are and for whom we exist and one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom all things are and through whom we exist. But not all have this knowledge. There are some who have been so used to idolatry up until now that when they eat meat sacrificed to idols, their conscience, which is weak, is defiled. Thus, through your knowledge, the weak person is brought to destruction, the brother for whom Christ died. When you sin in this way against your brothers and wound their consciences, weak as they are, you are sinning against Christ. Therefore, if food causes my brother to sin, I will never eat meat again, so that I may not cause my brother to sin. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. There is a, there seems to have been some sort of division within the community of Corinth in having to do with the meat that is sacrificed in all the various temples around Corinth. In a certain sense, that's the meat market. And um, for some who had come to faith in Christ, those meats, those meats represents worship to these different idols. And so, in a certain sense, it's very, very difficult for them to think of it, to eat from that meat. Now, others say, oh, my goodness, those idols are nothing. There's only one God, as he rightly puts. But the problem is, if it's done and it causes that person to slip back into their paganism, back into that idol worship, that's not a good thing either. So what he's trying to get at, at with this whole thing is that love looks out for my brother. It's wanting to have the best in my brother uh, so that they are growing in Christ, that they have a kind of a confidence in Christ. And so the last phrase, I think, is the most important one where it says there, therefore, if food causes my brother to sin, I will never eat meat again. Now that's quite a statement that Apostle Paul is making, but that's how much he loves his brother who is weak in it. He doesn't want him to fall into sin and that's how much he will go. Now the billion dollar question is how far we go in other areas of our lives that, well, you know, may cause our brother to sin, stumble and sin. And it's a tough one. It's not as if it's clear cut, but Apostle Paul was pretty clear on this one which was quite, uh, probably quite a, a major issue within the church at Corinth. The principle remains the same. I'm always looking out for the best for my brother or sister. I want them to grow in Christ. That's the bottom line. Hopefully we're all doing that during these quite trying days. Stay safe, folks. Hopefully we'll see each other soon. Bye for now.